Welcome to Takeaway, a weekly conversation with the ministry team here at Silverdale, where we talk about our reflections, our reactions to our pastor's weekend message. And it's December. We've just begun a new Christmas series, and I thought it would be fun for this series to do the whole series yeah. with Ricky. Awesome. Yes. But I don't think I really understood what I was getting myself into. Yeah. I mean, isn't this great? Um you know, a couple of weeks ago on your podcast, you said that Thanksgiving was your favorite holiday. And so I just figured I needed to be here to kind of bring you into the Christmas <laughs> spirit. Um, well, no, no, to be clear, it's the Thanksgiving meal. Oh, the I meal. Thanksgiving meal. Yeah, I love Christmas. Ricky and I have had this ongoing conversation over the last few weeks about whether or not I actually love Christmas. Well, I mean, people can tell. People at home, you can see. <laughs> If you're watching us online, if you're the, if you're listening on the podcast, you might not be able to see. So let me paint the picture. Christmas is going on over here. Christmas sadness over here. It's not sad. Oh, I. It's just. Would you not, like a snow globe? Would we, you like one Mickey snow globe from so, 2000? So for those of you who can't see, I did yeah. give Ricky permission to decorate his side of yes. the stage and and set it up. How I you have a to. Ricky Santa mug that I'm going to drink out of. <laughs> it's from 1985, so there's no telling what's in here. I, I hope what's in there is, is, well, anyway, let's just press on from that and let's yeah. get into uh, the, can so we do that? It's time to be serious it's, as well. Well, I mean, serious as you can be. Yeah, no, I can be serious. Is it true? I, uh, I can. I can okay. be serious. Okay, we don't have to be too serious. I mean, it is Christmas, right? <clears throat> so so this weekend, Tony preached a message uh, on Isaiah 9, 6, uh, born to rule. Yeah. And um, for, for those of you that are not able to look at your Bibles right now, I want to read that verse to you. It says, for to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. The authority to rule will rest on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And Ricky, I loved, I loved this message. I thought it was yeah. a fantastic kickoff to the Christmas season. Definitely. And, you know, I think we probably could do a podcast on each of these four names, mm -hmm. you know. Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, and Wonderful Counselor, but I don't think you probably want to do four podcasts. On I don't know that one. they want to hear four Yeah, podcasts. yeah, probably not, probably not. So let's just do one. <laughs> but man, like you said, what a, just a incredible, and it, I loved it because Isaiah is not necessarily, you know, we normally in Matthew and Luke, as, as Pastor Tony mentioned yesterday, and so I love how in this series we're going to be in Isaiah, we're going to be in Revelation, we're going to be in John, First John. And so I, I'm, I'm really looking Who forward to Who knew there were so many passages yeah. about the, the coming, you know, Jesus's incarnation, his coming into the world outside of the gospel? I feel like you're about to knock over my snow globe, yeah, so I'm going to move it back over here where it's safe. It, it may be yeah. safer over there. I get yeah. a little animated with my hands here when I get excited about this stuff. Um, so in, in, in Tony's message, when he talked about Jesus being our <laughs> wonderful counselor, he talked about how Jesus guides us. Yeah. And he, um, he gave an illustration uh, about the strongest man competition, which, I mean, I was expecting a, a picture of you to get. Yeah, you know, I've, I've won several of those competitions. I don't want to bring that up. I'm, you know, I like to be very <laughs> humble and modest, but yeah. I, mean, you know, I was actually man. thinking more of the announcer. Oh. In that with your oh oh oh! <laughs> you thought I would have announced, announced and not been in the competition? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean that guy that was picking up that huge rock and lifting it. I mean, that looks awesome. That looks pretty cool, right? Yeah, yeah. In the car. but yeah, that would be really cool to. I mean, that's that's always that was my dream as a kid is to be on ESPN. So I mean, strong man, sure. Hey, why not? So, but back to this, um, people are amazed by amazing displays of power. Mm -hmm. um, and Tony brought up the point that the most amazing display of power of all time is Jesus taking on human flesh, being born yeah. as a baby. And I don't guess I ever really thought about it like that, that mm. in comparatively. You, I've, I've thought about it often as God humbled himself. Right. Um, but not as so much a display of power. And, and really, that, that, that was helpful. Yeah, definitely. To it me was. understanding that all the power that God has was there mm. but contained you know in a little baby in a little baby yeah i would love to know um more about jesus's time as a baby you know in time as a kid you know we don't get a whole lot in the, that in the bible right that's always a something that's really fascinated me like what was he doing as a kid what was he doing as a baby 
Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, maybe maybe one day when we get to heaven, we can ask questions. You think like we can that. ask those? We can, Man, like I have a, a list. A and a time? I, I have a list. I have a list. I really hope that, you know, like the person who first put peanut butter and chocolate together was a Christian. Oh. Because that's somebody I want to meet in heaven and say, thank you. You oh. changed my life. Oh, well, that's, so that's, that's on my list. Too. That's on your list. Okay, but, good. but also on my list <laughs> are, are people like the shepherds yeah. that, 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 that the angels came and spoke to. And, mm. and Isaiah, when Isaiah was first given this message, how cool would that be? Yeah. Um, and so as Tony, as Tony moved on in the message, he talked about Jesus as <laughs> our mighty God rescuing you. And so, Ricky, yeah. I know you, know, you, have a, you have a story of rescue. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, cool. It's that. cool that you said that because that's what, what I put on there. You know, um, for those of you that don't know, in, in 2018 here at Silverdale in um, a friend of mine's office, I had a stroke. And when he was talking about being rescued, I thought about that. One of the details of my stroke, I don't share a whole lot about. I don't know why I don't. I just just don't. But as I'm going to, they, they kind of rested me on the floor when I had my stroke. But as I'm going to the floor, I called out, Jesus, save me. Mm. And because the way I was feeling then, like I was going down, like that this was going to be the end. And so... Um, that's exactly what I thought about in that moment when he was talking about being rescued, that um, God comes to our rescue, that he was there for me, you know, when we cried out to him. But, but I also thought, you know, in, the, in those big moments, you know, when you're when I'm having a stroke, when maybe you've been in a car accident, maybe when you're going through something big, we cry out. But, but God wants us to, to be rescued by him in those small moments. You know, when I'm having a tough day, when I'm when I'm out of a tough day at work, when it's a tough day with the kids, with uh, with my wife, you know, God wants us to cry out to Him and be yeah. rescued. And just even in the small moments, not the the big stroke moments, but you know, in everyday in life, all moments, you know. Yeah, yeah. Tony Tony read Jeremiah thirty two twenty seven. <laughs> I am the Lord, the God who rules rules over all flesh. Is anything too difficult for me? And then He had us look at each other and say. It's not too hard for the Lord. Yeah. And what a great reminder for each of us. And I think that's something that we maybe should wake up in the morning and, and be reminded of. You know what? It's not too hard for the Lord today. Yes. So good. So good. And then that third name, Everlasting Father, mm. um, talking about Jesus's love for you. And, and in the message he brought out, um, you know, typically when we think of the Trinity, when we think of God the Father, we think of the Father. We don't necessarily think of Jesus yeah. as the Father. And and certainly God is one. There's only one God. And, you know, and, and here, uh, Tony brought out that, that Jesus takes on this expression of fatherhood to us in the way he loves us, mm. in the way he, he is, you know, his posture towards us. Yeah, that was, that was probably my favorite um, point of the message. Um, and, you know, Tony talked about you know, maybe you have a um, a bad relationship with God. Maybe you have a good relationship. Or, you know, I have a great relationship with my dad, with my parents. You know, I have a awesome godly parents who are, you know, are members here at Silverdale. And um, I was actually with them yesterday watching the sermon. But um, when Tony said um, one of the things, one of the biggest things that he learned is that there's absolutely nothing I can do to earn God's love, nothing I can do for him to love me more or love me less that was one of the big things in my life when I learned that. Um, I actually learned that several years ago, listening to a sermon from from Pastor Travis at the at the old pit um, Thursday night sermon. And uh, I just is nothing we can do. You know, God loves us. And, you know, I have great parents, uh, um, but, you know, I always wanted to please them. You know, yeah. I, I want to please God. You know, both both are great examples of of sacrificial love to me. And so I wanted to please them. And so when when you mess up, you know, you don't want them to know, you know, when you do something wrong. And so, you know, we're broken, messed up people. And I love that to learn that there's nothing that I can do that's going to change their love for me. We can run to him when we yeah. mess up. You know, we don't yeah. have to hide as as a, you know, ashamed of what we've done, we can actually run to him. And so that's just, I love that, that part of the message. So good. So encouraging, such a wonderful moment uh, to be reminded of Jesus, Jesus's love for us. And, and so finally, Tony talked about in, the, in the, the passage where it calls Jesus, our Prince of Peace. And the three most stressing, stressful situations, Ricky, mm -hmm. uh, pop quiz time, yes. which of these do you find most stressful? Is it 
the dentist, uh, all those speeding tickets you've gotten throughout life. Um, uh, yes. Confession time here, right? Or Christmas. Yeah, remember, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about things I've done in front of my parents. <laughs> they might watch. Oh, they might watch this. No, I've got, I've only gotten two speeding tickets, and it's been a really. It's been years since I've got a speeding ticket. Good so. for you. Yeah, yeah. Good really for you, man. Yeah, Good yeah. for you. Thanks. Good. So, dentist. Yeah, dentist. I. Probably. Yeah. Um, which I don't like the dentist. One of my closest friends is actually a dental hygienist, and so I okay. love going and talking to her but then when the dentist comes in there he's you know what have you been doing with your life you know what, what have you been eating <laughs> you know do you grind your teeth like it's definitely the dentist i yeah. i don't i don't like yeah, it time to get you can't hide because it's definitely not christmas because christmas is not stressful christmas is the greatest holiday of the year well that's your experience yeah yeah that's I'm your sorry. experience but a lot you don't have to apologize i'm so no, glad for you but that's not everybody's <laughs> <laughs> it's not the most stressful experience yeah. for me either. yeah yeah you don't what would me. you say uh, on that list. Have you been arrested? I have lot? never been arrested <laughs> in my life. Um, I, and, uh, I, you know, I have had a couple of speeding tickets. I, I'll, I'll fess up to that. And that I do find in this list, I find that to be the most stressful. Um, but in life, whatever our situation is, hmm. Jesus calms us. Yes. That was the point that was brought out in that, yeah. is that Jesus is our Prince of Peace. He He's mm -hmm. there to provide calm. So it's an incredible list. And it's one of those that that we need to be reminded of over and over and over again. That just speaks to the importance of spending time in God's word, spending time with God's people so that yeah. we can be reminded of these truths of who Jesus is this Christmas season. Because I imagine for some of you, Christmas is incredibly stressful mm -hmm. uh, for a variety of reasons. And so um, we've got so much going on, right? Like it's like every night we're doing something during the Christmas that's season. Right. It seems like we got things to go to. We got obligations. We got, um, you know, plays, performances, you know, kid things. And so um, I loved how he said in that very first point under Wonderful Counselor, like, block out the noise, you know, spend time alone with God. You know, p people may say, you know, I just I want God to speak to me. Well, you're reading your Bible with the TV on and while you're scrolling Instagram. And so we wonder why we can't we don't have these quiet moments with God. And so, you know, during this Christmas time, let's let's pause. Let's block out the noise and make sure we're, we're spending time with him. So as we're coming to the end of this, Ricky, I have a question for you. Yeah. Obviously, you love Christmas. Mm -hmm. it, it's just all over you. you yes. You're wearing it. Yeah, you're, my shirt with the wet bandits. decked here. out on your side of the table in it. Yeah. Um, what's one thing you're going to do this Christmas to make sure that you celebrate Jesus in a fun way? Um. Man, you could have asked me that. Like, I could have prepped could have, him for you that. Could have prepped me Come that. on, man, you gotta yeah. have a plan. Look at this. This is like you're not a man without a plan here. I just, you know, being with family and and reminding them, even in all this, you know, this is fun. You know, Santa's fun, snow globes are fun, Christmas trees are fun. But the real reason is, you know, we're celebrating Jesus. This is a time that, yeah, we're gonna have fun, but we gotta remember that that is the point. And just reminding, just spending time with our family and reminding them. You know, I love reading the Christmas story with them, you know, before we go to bed Christmas, Christmas night and, um, you know, just wonderful things like that. You know, spend time with with your family and celebrate Jesus amongst all the craziness. I love it. I love it. So good. So helpful. Well, we do hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful month of December leading up to Christmas, that you find ways to enjoy the Lord, find ways to enjoy your family. And we hope that you're going to be here as part of our services. We have uh, a few more services in the month of December where we're going to be focusing on other passages about Jesus coming into the world, being bored, God incarnate that aren't found in the Gospels. And so we want you to be a part of that. Um, we have services at a variety of places on Sunday morning, a number of different campuses. You can go to silverdellebc.com to find out about times and places. We also have a Saturday service. And so if you're working on Sunday or traveling and you're not able to come on Saturday, and then also we're online. Maybe you don't live in the area or you're not able to come in person. We have online services as well. So make sure you spend time with the Lord and God's people in church. And we hope that you'll be a part of this next week.